uh, we have something called a frost line, which is where in the solar system uh, does water become liquid to absolutely frozen? And this uh, this mark is actually just past the asteroid belt, which is between Mars and Jupiter. Uh, so right at the uh, at Jupiter and beyond, water ice is pretty much frozen uh, at this point. Now, what's considered frozen versus liquid, and this is just on the surface though, everything's frozen on the surface. Titan uh, has liquid methane, uh, but still very much hard water ice rock. Uh, and then you get all the way out to Pluto, it's still very much rock uh, as as water ice. Now, when I when I mean rock, I don't mean like gravel in your driveway or anything. I mean just at the solid form of water ice, and it lays out the bedrock on Pluto. Now, Pluto, I I work in Kelvin at that point with temp uh, temperature, so Pluto is about forty Kelvin, which is about negative four hundred degrees Fahrenheit. It can get pretty cold on Pluto. And so all of this water ice, the fascinating thing is that uh, we kind of need to run some thermophysics, thermophysical models, yay. And what that means is how does the uh, water ice bend and move and crack and make geology, make mountains and glaciers and volcanoes on Pluto? And the cool part is, is that water ice at those very low temperatures act just like volcanic rock here on Earth. The physics are, are very much similar, which makes the math so much easier. Yay, <laughs> yay us. Uh, but understanding why is that, it's still, it's still something that we're still researching. But temperatures are, are not always relevant either. Just because outer solar system is very, very cold, there's uh, spots on the, the poles of the moon that can get just as cold as Pluto which is very fascinating. Uh, and the moon is certainly closer to the sun than it is to uh, you know, Pluto, but there's still these really uh, deep, dark spots on the moon that can be just as cold, which is so fascinating. 